Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Tonight, from the sold-out Joyce Center in South Bend, Indiana, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame play host to the Georgetown Hoyas. This is the first appearance ever on Big Monday for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame as they host number eight Georgetown. And the Irish still looking for their first ever Big East Conference victory. They're five and seven overall, but 0 and five in conference. Georgetown comes to town at 14 and two and four and one in the Big East. Sean McDonough along with Bill Raftery, happy to have you with us. And Bill, if the Irish are to pull off the upset tonight and get that elusive first Big East win, they're going to have to contend with Allen Iverson on both ends of the floor. And lately, he's been a phenom on defense. Great footwork, much like yourself. The ability to get there quick is extraordinary. That's incredible to be able to catch a pass like that. But playing passing lanes, he can change and disrupt the game like nobody we've seen. And he's coming off a 10 steal game Saturday against Miami. That's a Big East record. He's also the leading scorer in the conference right now at 23 points per game. Well, the, the decision you have to make is you can let him penetrate, which he's terrific at, and then creating or scoring. But I think the tendency would be, particularly for John, lay off him, make him shoot the threes. He's only at 33% there. Take your poison either way. Students back on campus in a great atmosphere here on the campus of Notre Dame as the Irish host Georgetown. Starting lineups brought to you by Buick. For John Thompson, it's Allen Iverson and Victor Page in the backcourt. Bubakar Al and Jerome Williams, the forwards. And Othella Harrington has seen his production go down year by year, from his freshman year to this, his senior year. And he's had a particularly tough time of it lately, statistically. For McLeod, the backcourt is Doug Gottlieb and Ryan Hoover. Got Manor back from injury at one forward. Pat Garrity, the Irish leading scorer and rebounder. At the other, and Matt Gosh is the tall, slender center, 6'11", 220 pounds. That's beefed up 20 from a year ago. Notre Dame in white, and could not control the tip. Garrity almost had it, but it went to Victor Page instead. Irish, man to man. And they will Excuse stay me. in man to man and look at uh, John gave me a little man to man early <laughs> and now the two three how about him today he said he'd be tempted to play zone and that's what has given Georgetown problems lately on the held ball the ball goes over to Notre Dame there's John McLeod zone defense is almost a dirty term as far as he is concerned exclusively a man to man coach throughout his career almost exclusively but said he'd be tempted to play his own tonight because Georgetown has struggled so much with it lately. Very untrusting a little nickel dimer by Allen Iverson the trap. Uh, Georgetown prepared full court over the timeline they'll give it to you in different spots. Big thing as we take a look at John and that tremendous record. Don't dribble too much. Short crisp passes something John McLeod worked on. This is Doug Gottlieb, the freshman point guard, became a starter the fifth game of the season. It's a very young Notre Dame team. Manor, out at the beginning of the year for seven games with a stress fracture in his foot. Injuries have also been a problem for Notre Dame this year. Pretty. And then Gotch was fouled along the baseline by Victor Page. Quickly, two team fouls on Georgetown, one on Page, one on Iverson. Should have shot that ball, and this I tell you the reason for the zone, huh? The difficulty deep. Pittsburgh played a 1-3-1 zone throughout the entire game last Wednesday at the Civic Green in Pittsburgh. Held Georgetown to a horrible shooting night, and the Panthers, who've won five in a row now, and the Ralph Willard cruise to a victory. And that's that long pass that they can get to Georgetown. Hoover, good deep shooter. You notice Scott Lee able to penetrate and find people. Good cut. And Hoover scores from in the lane, and the Irish have the first bucket of the night. It's a good passing team inside. You saw Garrity with the assist. Al stopped on the drive by Garrity, who's called for the first foul of the night against Notre Dame. Jim Burr, Ted Valentine, and Rick Hartzell, the trio of Big East officials working this one. His first. Iverson right off the inbound play. They didn't get to him quickly enough. Gottlieb late arriving, and Iverson gives Georgetown the lead. Look above the initial people here. Look to the second tier. You can't dribble. You can see the problem Hoover's having. Oh, took a hit by Page. And that's two now on Victor Page. Uh, John McLeod trying to get people in the right spots, and that's key, obviously, against the press. And then it's up to the natural ability of the players. Cut. 
make the correct pass. And with the two quick ones, Page goes to the bench, replaced by Jerry Nichols. And they continue to apply the pressure to Gottlieb. Broken well this time by the Irish. Manor double team. Yeah, nice reaction by Iverson. See how he's almost a one-man zone. Leaves his guy wide open. Hoover knocks in a three-pointer. Or was it a two? They're calling it a two. His toes were on the line. Ryan Hoover is the all-time leader at Notre Dame in three-pointers made and attempted. Some debris on the floor. Iverson called the attention of Jim Burke. Sean, what a nice job there. Iverson went gambling. They crushed court. You've got to make him pay. And Hoover can with that deep threat. Mentioned Georgetown's record. Their only losses to Arizona and Pitt. Forcing 24 to have turnovers per game while Notre Dame's had a problem with turnovers in Big East play. Committing nearly 20 per game. And Nichols can shoot outside. And they forced his own at just a little bit more. Jerome Williams strong to the bucket. Too strong off the glass. Gotch the rebound. He's going to be a player, by the way. Haven't watched some tape. You mentioned the weight. Very competitive. Athletic as well. Garrity blocked by Harrington. Hoover on the cut. And a bottle came off the Georgetown bench onto the floor. Well, that really negated a chance for the Irish at the goal. You know, Pat Garrity uh, going around this league a couple of times. It's like a pitcher. You got to the look the speed the delivery you can't just make up your mind and go with it you won't get too far Hoover missed the three Al was on the back of Garrity and Bubakar Al called for his first foul and big John along the sidelines trying he's he's extended his arms to his inside people keep him off I mean, this is a feisty Notre Dame team. I mean, they've struggled in the league, but they're getting closer. That's one thing John McLeod feels pretty good about. No question they are improving, and McLeod has seen a noticeable difference in the response he's been getting from respective recruits now that Notre Dame is in a conference, particularly a conference like the Big East. Manor got the bounce. Heck of a release, too. Of course, in the manner of custom. Get back, get set. 6-3, Notre Dame, just more than three minutes played. Iverson, an NBA three to tie it. That'll stretch you a little bit, huh? Now you're sitting on the bench if you're John McLeod. They, that's got hurt. Got his hand jammed up on that set. But, but if you're John McLeod, you're saying, I know I shouldn't have played zone. Look at Iverson knocking down those deep ones. You start questioning yourself a little, but you got to ride with a little bit. Play the numbers game. Well, if you go out and play him tightly, he's going to drive right by you. And as John McLeod said, the percentages are to let Iverson try to make threes because he's only a 33% shooter from three. And how about what he said about his speed? He hasn't seen anybody. Garrity had it swatted away, but he was also fouled by Jerome Williams. Don't make you duck a little bit, Garrity, up strong. Uh, I think what you could beat Georgetown on is dump it in, and if you don't have anything, they all turn, collapse to help out. They've got great reaction as a team. Find somebody with a quick kick. Already right, five team fouls committed by Georgetown in three and a half minutes. Garrity coming off a career high, 27 points, in a loss against Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh on Saturday, and Pat made the first that was a, an amazing comment given that John McLeod spent so many years in the NBA 18 as a head coach he said he's never seen a player with the speed of Allen Iverson at any level I mean, I'm thinking when he was talking about tiny archer ball amongst others good deep range here Nichols shooting it better lately Hoyas have been in a collective shooting slump, but they're burying the threes. Georgetown three out of three from three-point range. Manor missed a layup. Nichols, who made the most recent three with a rebound and push for the Hoyas. Tough shot. See that? Once a well, the kiss. Oh, the not deserved. kiss, though. Not, not deserved. Now, that's what will happen on occasion. Allen will get that field going and force a few. But uh, the great ones get a break here and there. And at our first time out, Georgetown leads by three. Three-point game. Now 
Allen Iverson has eight of the 11 George points. He's averaging 23 points per game. That has a fraction of a point ahead of Ray Allen in the race for the Big East scoring league. Is there a classier man in all of basketball than John McLeod? There might be some as classy, but you couldn't be a classier uh, guy than he, John McLeod. He's a real human being and a uh, great representative of any university. And speaking of whole package, the whole package, how about Clark? They used to say about that in his heyday. Straight up man to man, oh yes. Brian Hoover, the Irish captain. He's from Roscoe, Illinois, one of the few seniors on this team. And that's an NBA three off the mark. Harrington ripped it away from Manor, and the scrum continues. Held ball, Georgetown ball. And a substitution for Georgetown. Godwin Owinji, the junior from Nigeria, junior college transfer from. Bismarck State into the game. And Bubakar Ao has gone out. And man was saying Ao a moment ago. Matt Gotch with a apparent hand injury is back in the game. 2 3 should help them rebound, force the deep one, put a lot of stress. And they can't let him turn the corner though. Break it down. Nichols. Long rebound comes to Hoover. The first three point miss by the Hoyas tonight. Oh, there's the, it's almost like the open. And then Garrett, he took it back from Iverson. You've got a ball fake. Too good, too quick. Gary really used one of Iverson's tricks as well, sneaking up from behind to flick it away. Well, Gary, oh, he may have got away with a foul. He shoved uh, Williams, then almost sprained his ankle. And the pass from Gottlieb was errant, and that's the second turnover by the Irish. How about that, John? That's incredible. The vision, the coordination, eye hand. Overloading one side, ball reversal. 14 and a half remaining. First half, and the Hoyas still lead by three. Iverson bidding to make it to six. He thought he was fouled. The Winji had the rebound ripped away by Manor. So this, this makes the game shorter. It's a good run. Ooh, power to the goal. Good yeah, pass by Gottlieb, the look away to Garrity for the two. That brings Notre Dame back within one. Four points for Pat Garrity, who averages a team high 17 a game. Williams blocked by Gotch. Garrity stood in with the body, and Gotch went up to block the shot. Harrington was looking for the ball on the baseline, didn't get it. Nichols shut off by Gotch, and he got the roll around the rim. Five points off the bench for Jerry Nichols. And the Hoya lead is three with 13 and a half remaining. Garrity missed a three-point try. Iverson. Ooh. Ooh. Find him. The 20 by John McLeod. The pick and stay at the one end doesn't go down. Reminds you of Lambeer in his heyday with the Pistons, right? Garrity not making. But the turn of events, the long rebound ignites, and this is where he's at his finest, I think. Little extra pizzazz to Phil, but a big fella. And Othella, who doesn't get a whole lot of touches since Allen showed up on campus, still just plays within team. And Sean McDonough, being an authority on trying to hang in games when I coach, <laughs> you, there's segments, and you try and hang the four, the four, et cetera, get to the half, take a deep breath, make some sort of adjustments. But surely this is a quick half because they haven't made a lot of mistakes, haven't fed the Georgetown offense with turnovers. Well, they just did get it over to beat the 10 count. Five-point game, Georgetown with the lead, seven minutes in. Garrity, nice, terrific catching ability by these two big guys. Dodge at six foot 11, he's from Friendswood, Texas. In traffic, Page had it blocked. Jahidi White just into the game, wouldn't go. Yaya Ja also just into the game, had a poke at the rebound, but could not control. Oh. Great pass, Gottlieb the Manor. 
Well, his dad is here, former coach at University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and he told me a couple of years ago, my guy can run a club, and he has had a terrific beginning here at Notre Dame. Doug Gottlieb's dad, Bob Gottlieb, also coached at Jacksonville prior to five years at University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and he is in attendance here tonight. Hoover nearly had the steal. Oh, yeah, gets his own, and not the experience to make that kind of play. It was a no-no by Yaya. <laughs> It's a long season. <laughs> <laughs> Getting longer. Garrity was fouled. Now, right now, the reaction by ND is terrific. Getting to spots. And one thing that John McLeod does, he gets guys to be organized, understand where to go, just filling holes. And here, the reaction defensively. Shahidi a little bit late. And they get it up on the glass. Get to the foul line early, too, Sean. First foul on White, the Irish looking for the lead when we come back. Derek Manor. And Sean, you said you picked up today at practice. Uh, just a nice feel at the point position. Very confident. Gets the ball to the right spots. Knows his job. Manor bidding for the lead. Had it swatted away. White was there. It looked like he had the block. Garrity gives the Irish the lead again. Now he worked. He mixed it up. Pump fake, step through. Even though he attracted, froze the defender. Six points for Pat Garrity, sophomore from Monument, Colorado. Now, so they hit it baseline, they didn't have a guy roll. Uh, Page made up for it. But when you hit it on the short corner, the foul line man has to roll. You put a little stress on that interior defense. They got to get some touches on the box. First bucket by Victor Page puts Georgetown back up by one nearly midway through the first half. First meeting between these two schools since the 1989 NCAA tournament and only the fourth all time. So despite their common bond as a Catholic institution. There's a look away again for you. And Garrity fired up the fall away air ball rebounded by Jahidi White who missed Victor Page with the outlet. Uh, the guards have to come back and help the guy out, too. I mean, guards left to get down in the middle of the floor and run the fast break. The big fella turned it away on John, but they got to come back and meet the ball, too. This is game one of Big Monday. And Manor had it clang off the rim to Bubakar. Ow. Little wrinkle with the zone on the inbounds. Got it right to the foul line. Iverson had that deflected by Gottlieb. Again, Allen was looking for a foul on the arm. He's still pleading his case to Jim Burke. He talked during the lineups about the drop-off in point production from freshman year to senior year for Othella Harrington. But as you mentioned, with Allen Iverson around now, he's not as much of a focus, doesn't get the ball as often. Nasty collision in the backcourt. Hoover missed a three. And Page is still down to the backcourt. Rick Hartzell making sure he's okay before stopping the action. And playing five on four, Notre Dame gets the bucket from Pete Miller. And now the stop and play. What happened, Sean, is Garrity set up a pick to relieve the pressure in the backcourt. And then the head and the chin of Garrity, he recoiled on this. You just see the setup in the left part. And Ooh. oh my goodness. You see the tooth or the reaction in the jaw area and on the top of the head uh, John's looking over I thought he was looking over at us today. he's looking over at Jim Byrne looking for some and he was barking and that's why he heard some fans booing once now they may have to take him out if that continues to bleed profusely he's such an important member of the team they may want to consider a timeout to get him Patched up. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> he needs to get back in there. Skip Meyer, the trainer, with some quick work. Got a kick out of C, the assistants, Fran McCaffrey, been here for a few, a few years. Of course, Terry Tyler, former Detroit player under Dick Vitale. Hmm. Managed to overcome <laughs> that aspect of his resume to make a success of himself. Proves you can reach back and do things despite obstacles. Of course, we're kidding. I'm sure Dickie <laughs> B's watching somewhere tonight. He's a big Notre Dame fan. His daughters have attended Notre Dame. Sherry on the tennis team. And I have said this before. He was a heck of a coach at Detroit University. We unfortunately had a match with Durad and Long. Got great players. 
And Nichols, did great things. Nichols pass did not connect. Five turnovers committed now by Georgetown. Notre Dame by one, trying to pull off an upset tonight on Big Monday. Pass batted away by Nichols. They're amazing, Georgetown. The press never ceases. I mean, they give it to you full and always trying to play a pass, and you got a piece at the end. Six lead changes already. Godley right into Garrity, and he missed. And a tip by Marcus Young just into the game wouldn't go. Iverson with the goal. Oh, goodness. Lingerie on the floor. Get the janitor. Between two defenders, everybody looking to pick up a charge or at least stop him. Notre Dame continues to do a good job with the pressure, and that's a goal 10. Harrington swatted the hook, and that's the first bucket for Marcus Young, the junior from Detroit. And, Sean, you need the equipment man at the end of this play. Trying to pick up the charge here. Hoover reacts one side, set up the other, splice between. Great talent. Bubakar Owl has gone to the bench, and Owingi is back into the game. It's Williams, Owingi, and Harrington the front line with Nichols and Iverson in the backcourt. And Keith Horowski has checked in for Notre Dame, wearing number 20. Nice pass. And Owingi missed. The short one along the end line, rebounded by Garrity aggressively out of the pack. Karaski, uh, great talent in high school, many injuries and difficulties during the course of his career. Everybody around the program feels badly for him, but uh, trying to make it all up this senior year. Miller, the former walk-on now on scholarship, missed in the rebound to ONG. Notre Dame by one at 20 to 19, 840 left in the first half. Iverson a miss. Garrity another board. So that helps the zone. Mm -hmm. Shot like that. A couple of kicks, you can settle for that. Hoover lost the handle. Karowski and Iverson in a race. Karowski went out of bounds. Off a leg. Notre Dame ball. John Thompson doesn't like the call. And, and right there you can see the reaction. Notre Dame not prepared for that kind of frenetic play, Keith. A little nonchalant. Maybe you get some of the walk-ons in practice. You can do that, but not Georgetown. Joseph Tuomu into the game for the first time. Freshman from Williamston, North Carolina. Iverson with a rare breather. Traveling the call against Karowski. At that time, they went 1-3-1, extended a little bit. A lot of changes, nuances in the looks against John's guys. John McLeod resting his best player, Garrity, who's on the bench with six points and five rebounds. So Iverson and Garrity each on the bench with 8-19 left in the opening half. And for Notre Dame, a quiet atmosphere. I'm not used to this out here. You do some football in the stadium. I don't think they can. They believe in their uh, players right now. No. You need some help in this league. They're not doing all they could. The students are back on campus. They haven't had a game at home with the students on campus since December 6th. Out of bounds. Last touched by Pete Miller of Notre Dame, said Rick Hart. Georgetown is deep, though. A lot of rotation by John Thompson. Eight minutes left in the half. The Irish by one. Here at the Joyce Center, Notre Dame by one with eight minutes left in the first half. First of three games tonight on Big Monday. It uh, looks like they go man, they're back in the zone. They went man to man, one pass, got back in it. Nickel was fouled. Well, if you watch the tapes of the pit game, when they played exclusively zone defense for 40 minutes and one by 19, and Miami very successful in the zone and coming back against Georgetown and almost winning at US Air Arena on Saturday, you can understand the zone. Backcourt, not almost all the scoring to Georgetown. The only bucket from a front court player, the layup by Harrington off a great pass by Iverson. Coach McDonough. Yeah. When the other team is a little bit better, you try and come up with some wrinkles. So John's guys will see a lot of those different looks and zones. They should be better at it. But I do think once in a while Iverson attacks everything as though it's man to man. Yep. And isn't willing to make the extra pass or pry for people. And that's uh, sort of natural when you got that kind of talent. I mean, I can't relate. Clark can. For people of that stature. <laughs> Here's a little trap at a half court. Well, Dame also out rebounding Georgetown to this point. 12 to 9. Gottlieb and Hoover in the backcourt. Phil Hickey has checked into the frontcourt with Young and Miller. And that's a three by Ryan Hoover. On that, 
is so tough against a trapping team because you're scrambling, hustling, trying to play all the lanes, and all of a sudden you got a few extra feet to run out in Hoover. It's very damaging. Hoover has seven. He's only averaging 9.3 points per game. John McLeod said today he needs to get more out of Hoover, and he is tonight. Three-point try off the mark from Tuobu. Nice help. Good scrape down by Gottlieb. And he pulled it away from Owinji. Hoover threw it away, looking for Miller. It was too far in front of Miller. He thought Miller was going to run to the corner. Miller put the brakes on. They spot up with the foul line extended. Iverson back into the game. John McLeod does not counter with Garrity. He remains on the bench. That's still part of the press, though. That frenzied play. Miller wasn't where he was expected to be. I mean, he changed your thinking, forced you to do some things you're unaccustomed to. Harrington bouncing along the side of the lane, and it blocked by Hickey. They think Hickey's going to be a great player, and there's some serious woofing between Harrington and Marcus Young. And I'm surprised no quick T either. They've been doing that lately, but a nice pump fake. Harrington hasn't gotten the ball, so he comes up to the foul line, which is open against the 2-2-1. But even here, it's not the explosion to the goal and get it up there for that little kiss touch. Come on, Othello. Georgetown just two for its last eight from the field. They started off three for three from three-point range, and that part of the arsenal has disappeared. Harrington thought about the shot from the top of the key, moved closer and missed. Gottlieb, one on three for the moment, and wisely slows it down. Good look here. Hoover wide open for three. I hate to say it, if they leave him open, he's going to clean up. 22nd timeout called by Georgetown, and now the crowd's into it in earnest. Stretch the D, that's the idea when you get down the floor, and Gottlieb knows who the main parts of the arsenal are. Outside, it's Hoover. Inside, it's Garrity. That stroke in early in the year, John didn't start him. He was struggling. All of a sudden, 27 points versus Xavier. He's back a little bit. <laughs> Good help, and they get the grab. But that's reaction down on the baseline. We mentioned Miller on the other end. Cuddy, Pete Miller, able to help. Miller commits his first foul. He missed a couple of games at the beginning of the year, bouncing back from preseason right thumb surgery and torn ligaments in the thumb. How about their club with all the injuries? Manor, Miller, Marcus, and Bell out at different times. Bell tonight not able to perform. Gary injured with a stress fracture. They don't have the kind of depth that can respond. That's the one thing John said also. In the Big East, he found depth was one of the areas that conserved him. Very competitive, obviously. But the talent level, deeper than he's accustomed to. Ooh, Hickey. Gottlieb, trying to blow by Harrington. He did, but then missed the layup. Rebounded by Hickey. He was fouled from behind by Jerome Williams. Getting down the floor. Now the big guy lumbers a little bit. Gottlieb got all the way to the goal with the soft touch. And Hickey, I mean, this is a lot of weight getting down the floor. Great hesitation and getting it up on the glass. I think Gottlieb wanted, thought, thought this was counted, but you saw Hickey hit the frame fast. Hickey made the first, his first point of the night. He's a freshman from Wellsboro, Pennsylvania. We talked with Fred Farkas on John McLeod's staff today. He thinks Hickey has pro potential, just a freshman, but they think potentially he could be that good. Relax, Fred. You know, give him a <laughs> chance to round into shape and learn the game a little bit. Six-point lead for the upset-minded Irish to Olmo. Didn't get the bounce. It wound up with the ball on the end line. Page for three, and it wouldn't go to the lefty. Out of bounds to Notre Dame. Now, Page has got a great stroke. 
He's so important for John Thompson. He gets an open look like that. He's only at 42%. Really should be stroking him better. Wouldn't you say in the last three, four, five years, that has been the part of the Georgetown's game that's been lacking the two guard who can really knock it in consistently from outside. And they always go out and they recruit a guy that they think will do it. I think the aggressive play, sometimes they don't concentrate as much on the offensive. Nice look. A little too long. Another look away by Gottlieb on the three on two. Miller couldn't handle it. He gets you nervous at breakfast, huh? Georgetown has missed its last seven shots. Make it eight. Iverson short. Miller booted it out of bounds. Williams knocked it out of his hand, but then it hit Pete's leg and went out. And Georgetown play it in with 5.08 left in the half, and Notre Dame leading by six. Miller goes to the bench, replaced by Derek Manor. Page foul. Not ready to play as the shooting difficulties of Notre Dame illustrated with those numbers. 2 3, you got to face the basketball. And the zone working for John McLeod. Something he really hates to do. We asked him today, uh, any thought about playing zone? You asked him. He said, well, tempted, yes, but he seemed to indicate that he wouldn't do it. But right out of the gate, first possession, they played some zone. These coaches misleading information. <laughs> Last time I'm asking him, you mentioned his background, Oklahoma, wonderful career. Alvin Adams was his big player. And then in Phoenix for years, great success. Think about that Celtic series. 76, yeah. the NBA Finals, one of the great NBA final series ever. They almost beat the Celtics. He was very successful in the NBA, 707 wins, one of the winningest coaches in NBA history. But that was, uh, to, <laughs> had they get it up the floor, still struggling with it. This is a disaster waiting to happen, and finally it does. It goes out of bounds off the hands of Gotch. You can see that coming the entire possession. It was hot. The big thing uh, that Notre Dame does very well is pass the ball inside. That time it was Hickey, not Garrity, making the pass to Gotch. So not quite the impact that this guy has. Extended stay on the bench for Garrity, and Notre Dame did well while he was out. So doubly positive for John McLeod, rest for his best player and the lead. Harrington, 16-footer. Now they found the spot for him. They went five minutes between field goals. The string ended by that jumper by Harrington. Gottlieb tackled by Owl. Now out of the picture frame, Garrity and Gotch both got in the middle of the floor. You've got to give seen in looks, make yourself available against this pressure. You can't string out the guard. The fortune is to get to the line. Two fouls on Ow. And eight on the team, not yet the double bonus. This is a one and one opportunity. And Notre Dame perfect from the line tonight. Four out of four. And knew that was coming. As we said, they were four for four. Owl rebound of the mix. Georgetown. I think he could have got away with a walk, too, but called the foul. Offensive foul called. Well, it looked like a travel before the contact. Nichols called the offensive foul. Uh, trying to drive against the zone, particularly a pack 2-3 at some point. Pick it up and kick. First foul on Nichols. Look at this little play. Crowd thought Gottlieb was tripped. Gotch attacking the bucket. What count? No. They wipe it off for an offensive foul. Great reaction by Georgetown. I love the little wrinkle. The last couple of times, Gottlieb passed the ball in, cut down the gut. They end up with a good opportunity here, but you're going to have to pull up. This team is prepared defensively as well as anybody in the country. They understand how to draw your body. God felt if he pulled up, it would have been swatted by Harrington. The lesser. And that's the two. Yes, yeah, so we'll go ahead and commit the foul, I guess. <laughs> two point over Page and. The Hoyas have tied it. They're down six a moment ago. Notre Dame's gone cold. They haven't been as good with the ball lately. A trend that continues. Garrity lost it. Here comes Nichols. Iverson with the deflection. Page for the lead. And it gets tipped to Hoover. You've got to play 40 against Georgetown. And there are no lulls. John McLeod calling out play one down. Hoover stumbled crossing the midcourt line. Three and a half remaining first half. We're tied at 28. Game one of three tonight on Big Monday here on ESPN. Uh, Georgetown overreacts. A ball reversal, very important. Look at this help. Beautiful. 
Ow. Ow, literally. Ow blocked it, and then Ow is Page hit the deck with great hustle trying to save it. 28 all. Back to South Bend, Indiana after this. It's upset my Notre Dame here tonight in a tie game. Well, they're having their troubles lately. You mentioned how tough it is to handle. Look at Iverson, the deflection. That turns into a basket at the other end. You can't relax. You're not safe. Don't bounce it. Look to hit somebody. Notre Dame to play it in. Gottlieb, a lob for Gotch. Good catch and score. That's the athletic part that I was impressed with in his game. A little pressure, and they get back. Page, Gotch had his back turn. Will the bucket count? No indication yet from Jim Burr. Yes, it will, and the Hoyas will go to the line with a chance for the lead. The end of this, Gotch tried to negate that pass. It's showing you right on the money. Gotch never saw Page. Got him twisted around. And that was all because he was in the press, never ran, sprinted, and got into position. And Georgetown has the lead. As Page finishes the three-point play the old-fashioned way. They come to attack Gottlieb. And he gets it over with about two seconds to spare. Good cut to the foul line. Manor had it rejected by Nichols. And the lob. Page got it in deep. And the shot would not drop for Al. Notre Dame's gone cold, but there's still only one point down with 235 remaining in the first half. And Georgetown with the man of man has gotten hot defensively, too. They haven't given them any looks. Little duck in by Garrity. Look at the help. Nice pass. Now the gotch was fouled, and it was blocked by Harrington. Page behind the back. Great pass. Oh, had it blocked by Manor, who met him at the rim. Unbelievable. I don't know if he got that stuck up on the rim, too, or the hand was in there. But Georgetown had a good opportunity. He didn't take advantage. Rodley guarded very tightly by Page. Great. And another turnover. Nichols to step in. And Al was fouled by Manor. Second foul on Manor. Bubakar Al will shoot a couple. Unbelievable. The pick and roll, they blitz it. They got the rotation in the back. And ND tries to counter Sean. Look at this now. Here's the step out on Garrity. You think you're free at the foul line. All of a sudden, the push the other way. Great luck. Hustle here to make sure the ball doesn't go in the basket. But Georgetown, extraordinary on the defensive end. Great reaction the last few trips. Particularly good decision to foul given that Al was a 41% free throw shooter for the year. 58%. Very good from the field. Well, you are on the street tonight. We got Gottlieb earlier going the wrong way. Yeah, and we got, got Bubakar healthy. First down, 7 of 8 from the line as a team. Uh, John Thompson's philosophy and watching so many games, you can be off on the offensive end, but you can win by getting after it and switching and hustling at the other end. They've just been terrific the last five minutes. Hoyas by two, minute 45 left in the first half. Chris and Clark standing by for the Delta Fawcett halftime report. Look at the pressure, the intensity defensively by Iverson. Hickey had a jarring pick on Iverson. And Iverson goes to double Gottlieb. Miller was open but passed it up. Ten to shoot for Notre Dame. Well, they had Hoover if they hit him quickly. Shot clock at five. And Gottlieb too much dribbling. That's exactly what John McLeod did not want. Iverson didn't get the bounce on the layup. Page the save. He missed it from in close. The foul on the rebound action against Al. Just amazing defensively. Not able to finish though. So it's hurt them and kept the, the, the score so close. The eyes, the footwork, the position takes the hit. They've been stringing that out. The extra bounces, as you noted, and John was annoyed at. And right here, you can just see the blow by ability. Hoover reaching. No shot. Get in front of him. Bubakar out. Now has three fouls. 
Tate Miller is at the line. Two shots. Double bonus situation now. And Miller flipped up a rock on the first of his two. Three fouls on Al, so he sits. Miller hasn't been to the line much this year. Only seven times prior to tonight he had made four. Notre Dame, the worst free throw shooting team in the league. 59% coming in. That's horrible. Coming up with the Delta Fawcett halftime report, Chris and Clark will update Marcus Camby's health. Fortunately, it's good news. Wake Forest in action tonight. And in the NBA, Michael Jordan paid a visit to the Capitol, take on the Bullets. They'll have highlights. Well, Sean, that's great about Camby. If, in fact, he is healthy. Uh, yes. I don't think you'll see the pick and roll, incidentally, at the other end. They have not played it. Or they, Georgetown's played it great. Notre Dame struggled. It brings a lot of attention to the ball. Jackson came into the game for the first time, missed, but Iverson was there in the traffic to follow and give Georgetown a four-point lead. Notre Dame can hold for the final shot of the half. Quick to the ball. Did he elevate the little guy? They go 1-4. I don't know if they're going to pick late. This has not been effective. They've gotten stuck with this pick and roll with the blitz. Here it comes again. Now they stay at home. And they've had trouble with that, baby. After a great start for Notre Dame in handling the ball, all of a sudden they're turning it over almost every other possession, it seems. And Georgetown has taken advantage of the mistakes by McLeod's charges to go on a 12-2 run. They'd like to make it 14 or 15-2 to, to end the half. Sean, you don't want to bring bodies together against Georgetown. It's got to be pass and cut, spread, space. Make them overcommit. That's when you can counter a little bit. But you bring that ball in a pick and roll situation. You may get away with it a couple times, but they've been reading it beautifully. See the time remaining in the half. Nichols needs to start looking toward the basket. He throws a desperation three up that almost went off glass. Notre Dame in the first half had 11 turnovers and 12 field goals. That's not a good ratio, but they're in the game as they continue their quest for their first Big East win. 34-30. Halftime advantage of four points over the fighting. Be back live to the sold-out Joyce Center in South Bend, Indiana. Let's take a look now at the halftime stats. No out shot Georgetown. Georgetown with the lead despite the fact that it did not shoot very well. They made their first three three-pointers, then missed the last seven. Notre Dame a slight edge of the rebounding battle. The turnovers at the end of the half, what really hurt Notre Dame. Cost them, and they got some offense going for Georgetown. They have to be careful with the ball. Getting back to John McLeod's statement, don't over-dribble, don't make long passes, little trap. And Gottlieb on a design play out of halftime. The lob to Garrity to bring Notre Dame back within two. Two, three. And more zone, more of a surprise from John McLeod. Misleading conversation. <laughs> Let me tell you, very upset. Harrington from the elbow off the mark. Notre Dame with 26 20, then struggled the remainder of the first half. Georgetown closed out the half on a 14 4 run. Got leave to Gott. And oh. he got it to power down. They thought he was fouled on the Notre Dame bench. A great look, and he got it too. <laughs> oh. Now that one put a few pounds on him. He is going to be a terrific player, I think. Four points for Notre Dame right out of the locker room, and they've cut the four-point deficit to even money at 34. All great catch by Iverson on a bad lob. Then Page missed the three. Gotch was holding off Al with his free arm, and Gotch got called for a second foul. This is just pretty basketball. Gottlieb with the confidence, uncanny for a freshman to go into the teeth of the zone and regaling himself. But Gotch showing plenty of gusto going tall and going strong to the tip. Harrington Williams out the starting front court with Iverson and Page, same five that started the game. Starts the second half. Ow playing with three fouls. Williams dribbled into traffic and banked it in. Good use of the glass. You notice Iverson, they alley oop to him. They've had him running the baseline. First points of the game for Jerome Williams. And there's a three for Ryan Hoover. 
13 for Hoover. Iverson trying to answer. And Manor rebounds and is fouled by Williams. Now that helps. Iverson trying to score before the 2 3 is set. Certainly assists Notre Dame. They had just run a few nice. John Thompson got the ball to Williams in the box area. He was able to convert. And then you come down, take a flyer. Relax a little bit, Allen. Three fouls now on Jerome Williams. So the two starting forwards for Georgetown each have three. Iverson the steal of the lazy pass by Manor. And Gaunt's tried to block it, and Iverson said, no way. Uh, John wants the foul. I think it was a great, clean play on. Is that impressive? You're about his size. You think you can soar like that, my That's man? That's where the comparisons end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Straight up, man. Georgetown by one. Godley blew by and laid it in. And the stretch of the D. That's all McLeod, that play. I know he did it, Gottlieb, but just the deployment. Perfect. And a scintillating start to the second half at both ends. The crowd will do it. Notre Dame leading by one, two and a half minutes into the half. Williams went for the jam. Gotch contested. Six points for Othella Harrington. Georgetown by one. Thank you. The officials doing a nice job of letting the big guys play underneath. Uh, Notre Dame with the 20, but Gotch very active with the two and aggressive. Sean, take a look at this now. Everybody spread left wing. You'll see late Williams trying to get involved, but that's because they're all out. One at foul line extended. Gotch in the corner. Defense stretched, and Gottlieb with a great read. You mentioned Doug's dad, Bob, head coach, and also played collegiately at Ohio State. Doug's from a very athletic family. His brother Greg played at Drake, is now an assistant coach at Cal Poly. His grandfather, Walter Bernstein, played football at Syracuse. There's Bob Gottlieb, Doug's dad. Grandmother, Edna Bernstein, played basketball for the women of Citrus, as I call it. Syracuse, the orange women. Well, as a graduate, you're permitted. As long as you keep sending those checks. Yes. And they were telling me Bob very nervous, not in his seat, moving around. Typical coach. And his son's involved. Typical father as well. Mm -hmm. Notre Dame has made all four of its shots from the field in the second half. They're down by one. They're down four at the break with three minutes into the second here in South Bend. You can run your sets and get some good looking shots. Deep by God, what a follow. Gotch got his own miss and put it back. That is a pretty good offensive rebound, but think of the faulty D, the follow and no checkout. It's the 14th lead change of the game. Harrington bidding to make it 15. He'll have a chance at the line for two. May have been number three on Gotch, too. And you are correct, sir. That is the third on the junior from Friendswood, Texas, former Texas Class A State Player of the Year in his senior year, Friendswood High School. Now, I've got to think as we check out Marcus Young coming in that the next couple of years, they will make great strides in their recruiting. And John felt the same with television. John McLeod, Big East, the competitiveness of it, that people will start, will start thinking of it as a basketball situation, not just a football. They do play football here, don't they? They do. As, as John says, we're in a great basketball state. There's no reason why we can't capitalize on the great fan interest. He said, if we start to win, they'll be knocking down the doors here. This game is sold out, as are many of their others the rest of the season. Example that he cited was Rafe from France. He thought after Rafe from France visited here that Rafe would come. He was one of the most high recruited players in the country. But the thing that they were lacking in the French Gold McLeod was the league. Garrity with the miss. Young missed the follow. An easy one for both guys. Got to finish. Page, the spin, the dump to the baseline, and now scores for Georgetown. See, that's the temptation now. That is Georgetown's philosophy. You didn't make it almost a steal here, but they got you going up and down a little bit now, so they're in command. Georgetown leads 43-41 with 16-13 remaining. And Sean Ray for French disappointed Iowa, too, by the way. Did. They thought they were going to get a real good shot at him. Well, McLeod really believes after his conversation with LaFrance when he decided to go to Kansas. Had they been in the Big East then, LaFrance would have come here. Nice look by Manor. 
And the steal by Garrity. Bill Georgetown by two. Gottlieb will walk it up and settle his team down. It's the same kind of a set that they dribbled to the goal on earlier. Little pick and roll. This got him in trouble, too, if you remember. Gottlieb, a tough pass. About thigh high. Young didn't handle it, but Manor hit the floor. And all along, Gottlieb missed it. Young there to put it in. Now uh, you got to play aggressively. You got to meet their force and will. Iverson. He swung the left handed Hoover, who was riding him. Iverson missed a three. Garrity, the rebound's getting a little physical now. You see some free arms being swung at the opposition. Uh, the refs are certainly letting them mix it up. And I think good, hard basketball, though. Nothing really vicious. 43 43 the score. Nearly five minutes into the second half. Garrity charges along the baseline, had it blocked by Arrington, but a foul called on Othella. And that's his first of the game. Uh, Georgetown didn't really react defensively, Sean, as we've seen them over the years. I mean, good baseline drive, no support. Othella tried to help and lead. Nobody coming down, everybody's staying at home. That's not typical Georgetown defense. Fatigue, possibly. And that might have been what John Thompson saw as well. As Harrington gets a seat. Jahidi White back into the game. Garrity got it to spin in. It took its time deciding if it wanted to stay down. Pat Garrity up to nine points and seven rebounds. Chance for a double double tonight. He's had two this year. Played on the West team in the Olympic Festival. Very competitive guy. The little offense could help ND right now. Irish by two. Notre Dame trailed by four at halftime, but they played well over the first five minutes of the second half. Well, in watching tape, drive, draw, and dish is what I wrote down on Doug Gottlieb, and he has been able to do that consistently. And think of the freshman to take this heat. This is that set where they just give him a chance to blow by, fakes the pick and roll, explodes to the goal. He has been terrific, and he has not gotten a little bit of a blow either. 19 minutes of the first half. With all this pressure on him. Zwobu back into the game for Georgetown. Ja also in, as is Nichols. And in action for Georgetown. With the exception of Iverson, the only starter in the game, he fed Ja for the easy two. Well, he makes things so easy. I mean, the X's and O's you can throw out without an Iverson. He just turned the corner, created offense. 45 all. Rodley double team is pass deflected. The back guys aren't reacting as well. Shot clock at 12. Garrity's going to get a good look if they go back to him. Manner put it on the floor in traffic and is now struggling to retain it. He took a shot in the nose. And a held ball, Georgetown takes over. Now there's a mistake. Garrity's alone, top of the key, good, deep shooter, and just the aggressive defense makes you think you can do other things. Scary. Only I mean, nine times has he touched the ball when they've been on offense. And I, I have down 18 minutes. So, I mean, it's plenty of minutes to get more opportunities. And think of it, four of them were the jumpers, top of the key and in the foul area. Had the zone and impact and Iverson dominating, probably part of those reasons. Right down the lane, Robo rebounded by Jahidi White, and he was fouled. Marcus Young just, that's a tough guy to knock to the, uh, the ground, isn't it? Not good penetration, not a good shot. That was a chance for Notre Dame to clean and push the other way. This is a handful. Yeah, 270. I hear you. Put a few guys down with that wide body. Three fouls now on Marcus Young. Nichols tried to inbound right underneath, and they turned it over. Notre Dame will play it in. Now, early in the year, Shahidi White played very well. I have to have a couple of his games. He's been quiet of late. For them to be a factor in March, he's going to have to step up his game. 
Now have Iverson on the ball on Gottlieb. It's Tuomu defending Gottlieb. Iverson's running around chasing Pete Miller, and he nearly, he did steal the pass intended for Miller. It's amazing. He disrupted the dribble in the first half. Here he plays off the ball with one. 15 turnovers now committed by Notre Dame. White powers to the bucket and was fouled. He just carves so much area. How impressive is Allen Iverson, Sean? I mean, I'm just thinking it's easier for Gottlieb now. Maybe John should put him back on him. All of a sudden, he comes up with a steal off the basketball. So he's disruptive no matter where he is. He's been tremendously impressive. And, and he's just one of really three or four in the league competing for Player of the Year honors. Ray Allen, Kerry Kittles, Allen Iverson. At this point, you can make a serious case for all three of them. And knowing you as well as I do, because you mentioned Allen first, I assume that's your pick right now. Yes. And I, I don't think I'd argue with you either. Season ended the day. I think uh, Ray Allen be the player of the year in the Big East. A long way to go, though. White made one out of two. Hoover and Ja, and Hoover able to knock it off Ja. And they get the full court pressure now. This is not a good, as good a group defensively on the floor. You may see a breakaway. Gottlieb got it into Hoover, ticking down to 13 minutes remaining. Georgetown in a battle throughout against the underdog Fighting Irish. And the Hoyas lead by one. I'd go inside. I don't think the inside defense is as tough right now. They're trying to do that with Garrity. They came to double him. Gottlieb. Hoover, tough shot, wouldn't go. Garrity the rebound. Tough, in traffic rebound. Fresh 35, John McLeod calling out a play. Extending four fingers. That's the kind of pass you have to make. See that chest pass? Put something on it. Garrity, well off. Marcus Young puts Notre Dame up by one. Not the experience on the floor inside for Georgetown right now. They're still going with John White inside. Iverson a three. Didn't put a hand up. Georgetown had missed nine three-pointers in a row. Iverson has 19 points. Doug Gottlieb would have give John Thompson a smooch. Taking Iverson off the hip. He's had a little more relaxing time. Good look for Hoover here. Long three that he missed, following the rebound action against Notre Dame. So Heidi White had the position, Marcus Young fouled him, and that's four on Young. Timeout with 11.51 remaining, and the Hoyas leading the Irish by two. We switched to Cox. Now we're seeing more business than ever. Their high-speed internet lets us handle a large volume of orders online. Plus, their business phone system was easy to set up with the features we needed most. And our customers, they love the Cox HD service. Enjoy. It's time your business ordered better communications. Call Cox today. Rowski got another pick from Hickey. He that took a couple of bounces off the rim, and Garrity just committed his fourth. Tough. You want to play physical? Ooh, got a team on Williams with the elbow. Well, Williams started it with some woofing. Garrity responded to that with some woofing, and there wasn't any contact. It was all verbal. But then once Williams threw the elbow, Ted Valentine was there and tagged him for it. Well, John's out of the box. He's got to be careful. And he's really wrong on this subject as well. Directly opposite him hits the inside arm, too, of Williams. Williams saying that Garrity had him by the arm, and that's why he threw an elbow. And now Jim Burr is going to confer with Ted Valentine. And of course, that counts as well. And that makes it four fouls on Williams. And this is where it all started, the little pushing and shoving. And there's the woofing by Williams. And he stays in his ear. Finally, Garrity turns. And then there's the elbow. That was detected, as uh -huh. you see, by Ted Valentine. Williams will shoot first because Notre Dame is over the limit. This will be a one and one opportunity. So on that play, both Garrity and Williams committed foul number four. And a 
seven point lead, the largest for Georgetown. Now they'll go to the other end to shoot the technical. Hey, John's guys are playing tougher and harder than I've seen them in a few years. John McLeod, you're talking no, about. No, no, I'm talking about Georgetown. They're a little well, more quite a physical. They uh, generally yeah. play with. I think they were gentle toughness. the last couple of years, to be honest with you. Hoover noted it's all time leading free throw shooter. 84% career made both, as you might expect. So Garrity sits with four. That's big. Al comes back into the game with three fouls to replace Williams, who just got his fourth on the technical. Here's the booze as he goes out. White struggles to get it in and throw it away. I don't know why Hoover didn't go to the backcourt. And Page hits the runner. That's a big sequence. Hoover played it like the NBA. You couldn't go behind the line. And Page nearly stole the inbounds pass. That, that's where they're so good. That's frenetic. It's at the pace they want. Score, get it set, tighten it up. Gottlieb is back in the game. Manner's going to come back in for White. So it's Gottlieb and Hoover with Hickey. Manner. Oh, my goodness. And Gotch. And Hoover making like the rocket. Jim Burr says that pass was deflected. Or does he? He pointed the wrong direction. It will be Georgetown ball. Folks wouldn't let that guy try out on that kind of pass, huh? No. There's no Ron Paulus. <laughs> And the turnover is starting to pile up for Notre Dame. And the game is also starting to slip away from them. They're not a team that can score a lot of points in bunches. And they're not going to generate off the defensive pressure full court either, particularly against Georgetown. That opens up their game. Notre Dame, the lowest scoring team in the Big East at 68 points per game. It's tough for them to come back from a large deficit. And that deficit almost went to 10, but the three would go for Page. Gottlieb the push. And Nichols went for the steal and nearly committed a foul. And that whole trip, Nichols played a passing lane, got behind to deflect. Hickey working on Jock. Oh, careful. Iverson with the pass that was too soft, picked it off, missed the layup. Nichols active on the offensive glass, then Manner stripped him. He is such a nudge. <laughs> <laughs> get out of here, please. Uh, that's what you have to say to him. Didn't get the kind of release you wanted on the offense, but got right back after it. It's just a very short pass that he was trying to throw, but it still didn't have enough on it. Hoover open for three. They need it and get it. They've been struggling. Four-point game, 7.25 remaining. John wants a 20. Thompson, that is. And he gets it. 7.20 left. Well, neither coach has his 20-second timeout remaining. And it's a four-point game at 60-56 to 56 with 7.20 left. And having watched Georgetown against uh, a lot of teams this year, but in particular when it's a zone, they can get a little impatient. So uh, 7.20 left, stay in that 2-3. Force some problems defensively. Dribble drive, they got to be careful of. Look at this heads up play by Hoover. Really, Iverson in reverse. A pass without enough on it, and Hoover picked it off, and it's a two point game. They extended the zone, which hadn't been done. Pretty good call by the old timer. And as much noise as we've heard tonight here at the sold out Joyce Center, Nichols, long three. Boy, does that help them. That's amazing. They were struggling the last two trips then. That would have been well beyond an NBA line. Nichols with a three-pointer to push the lead back to five and put the fans back in their seats for the moment. Jerry around 50% from two and three-point. Nice look here. Manner blocked by Ja. Hickey. And a foul against Ja. That wasn't a rookie move by Hickey. That was strong to the tip. I talked about the ability of Gottlieb to find people a little look away, the perseverance defensively, the reaction, and this is just power. Take your shot and get to the line if possible. He's shooting two, nothing but net on the first. 
He's perfect from the line, three for three. And John doing a nice job, Fran McCaffrey, in the background of yo-yoing his big people, Garrity and Gotch. Ja rebound of the miss, four-point game. Six and a half minutes remaining. Georgetown with the ball, leading by four. Page and Iverson, Ja, Harrington and Nichols. Iverson open for three. How about those six points? I mean, talk about onions. Two guys taking deep ones. They don't go down, advantage ND. The lead back to seven. Gottlieb got it over with about two seconds to spare, and John McLeod calls timeout. 6.01 remaining from South Bend, Indiana, where Georgetown leads Notre Dame by seven. Number four team in the country is pulling away. The number eight team in the country, Georgetown, has had a struggle all night with winless in the Big East, Notre Dame. Georgetown with 11 steals. Allen Iverson has four of them in addition to his 22 points, the big three-pointer a moment ago. Notre Dame with the rebounding edge. And as John McLeod had hope, Ryan Hoover has picked it up in a big way. He's played very well. And Gottlieb as well to get it and others. Lots to talk about on the Duracell storyline tonight. Garrity back in the game with four fouls. John McLeod won't wait any longer with the lead up to seven for Georgetown. Iverson always looking to beat you to the ball when you come around the wing for the pass. Shot clock at five. Gottlieb passed it off. Hoover had to shoot. He made it. Just a two. Great reaction. Well, good players get bailout passes. Gottlieb found one. 22 for Hoover, his season best, 27 against Xavier. In an upset win against the Musketeers in Cincinnati that ended Xavier's 20-game home court winning streak. Now that foul line with the look down is very effective. Ja from the elbow, way off. Barely scraped the side of the rim, but Ja kept it alive. Harrington, the rebound, and he was fouled. And if that's on Marcus Young, and it is, he has fouled out. Weak side rebounding. Yeah, if you don't touch the ball a lot, you might as well go get it. And catch it off the tin. Good strength, hold off, and all the scraping going down underneath. And Manor in there as well. You mentioned Young got that one. He is eliminated. And at least he made it through the game unscathed. What a season he's had. Preseason, he had a tooth knocked out in practice. Then he was poked in the eye, missed a game. Then he missed seven games with a stress fracture of his foot. Then, unfortunately, he had a tragedy in his family. His grandfather died. He had to leave to attend the funeral, missed another game. Then last weekend, when they're in Pittsburgh, they're practicing at Carnegie Mellon University. He took down a rim with a slam dunk. It hit him in the head. He had nine stitches in the head and ripped off the tip of his finger. And the worst part is nobody got to see it on national TV. No. That's most, the biggest trouble, but his finger's fine and they feel he can contribute as the year progresses in that inside rotation. A big, strong. Godley able to sneak along the sideline. Iverson trying to poke for the steal all the way, and again, he reached on Manor. He still slaps at Manor and caused the problem. Out of bounds, Notre Dame ball with 20 on the shot clock. What a pest. I mean, just total involvement, disruptive. More so, he contributes on the defensive end than offense. Two three zone put in there to keep Iverson calm down and he just beats you up on the defensive end. I think they're gonna get Garrity some touches down on the block. They need a shot. Gottlieb right. has to shoot. Violation. Gotta be alert. And then see the step up defense by Georgetown there, critical time. They do, and I'm not so sure the ND guys do. So Georgetown has the ball back with a six-point lead, 4.22 remaining after the 19th turnover of the night by Notre Dame. That's their average in league play. And a big reason why they're 0-5 in conference. And all the new teams have struggled. West Virginia still yeah. has not won a league game. Rutgers has a win over Notre Dame. You want to get out your small change? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not uh, happy with that little 
Nickel dimer. They don't have those chops out this way, do they? The five and dime. Four fouls now on Gosh. So Hickey has, rather, Garrity has four. Gotch has four, and Young has already fouled out. The 10 team fouls, so Georgetown will shoot two the rest of the way. Well, depth up front and power up front are very definitely Georgetown's favorite. Yes. It's two wearing at this stage in the game. There's the two worst free throw shooting teams in the league coming in. He has improved on its percentage coming in. And Harrington made the first to two, the lead seven. McLeod, 58 years old, still in tremendous shape. Swims a thousand meters a day in the pool here. That's over a half a mile a day of swimming. We had trouble getting to the hotel with our walk. Yes. Nice kick. They should go strong. No, you can't slow down. And would have counted anyway. Iverson tipped it above the rim. Goal tending, but it went in for Gottlieb, and he has four points. Doug explode to the goal. You don't yes. give Iverson a chance to get a piece of it. Georgetown by six, under four minutes remaining. Uh, the idea for ND is to force them to keep taking those deep jumpers, and they must rebound on them. Try and keep it out of the middle with the dump down. Iverson for three. Short, big rebound by Gotch. Don't need it, don't need it. Nope, they did not need it. Gottlieb, an ill-advised pass. Was it deflected? Yes, says Ted Valentine. He said Iverson got his fingertips on it. That's a huge break. And Hoover turned around and looked at Gottlieb, gesturing to calm down. Six-point game. Notre Dame will play it in when we come back. Sean McDonough and Bill Raftery here at the sold-out Joyce Center. In South Bend, Notre Dame to inbound, trailing by six with 3.35 left. And Sean, the big thing is the trapping ability of Georgetown on the inbounds. They make it very difficult. Rot leave to throw it in. It's a manner. Trying to run Hoover open for a three, and Ow with a big size advantage is all over Hoover. Straight man. 20 to shoot. Garrity ought to get on the same side as Hoover because they're playing him so deep. Garrity down the lane. Garrity missed it. Rebounded by Gotch and he missed it. Now a battle won by Ja. He got it to Al. Big sequence as Notre Dame had a couple of shots from in close and missed both. Couldn't beat the opportunities. Under three minutes remaining now. Georgetown by six. Got to pack it in, ride it once more, force the deep one and rebound. Timeout, Georgetown. With 2.50 remaining. They have the ball in a six-point lead, and we'll be back on ESPN after this. Six-point game with 2.50 remaining here in South Bend. Bella Harrington and the Hoyas trying to dodge a bullet. Had kind of a shaky week, the upset loss. They were blown out by Pittsburgh. And then they struggled to beat Miami at home over the weekend, and they had their hands full with the Irish tonight, each team with two full timeouts left. You can see that Georgetown isn't even up to the 17 fouls that would put Notre Dame at the line. They have one, the arrow points for the Irish. And they go man to man. Again, why wait? Great steal. Manor. Missed the layup, Hoover missed the follow. Garrity had it poked away. More great chances to go unanswered for the Irish. Killers! And really not the big guy swatting either, not flicking instead of converting. Softly. Run clock, he penetrates. You commit, and he usually finds some people. Got a pinch. Shot clock at 10, two minutes remaining. Iverson, the pull-up, big shot. Big time. Major League, before the pinch got there, stroked it. Eight-point game, and now Notre Dame has to hurry with the clock down to a minute 45. And Georgetown's good at making you use clock defensively. Garrity trying to back shot. Garrity gets the bucket. Six-point game, minute 34 left. You know the game, you start to think I about think you the got foul against this. The way they shoot, shoot, yeah. Uh, John's saying that. 
I think Hoover was trying to give that. Georgetown just 62% for the year and 59% in league play. Iverson very annoyed by Gottlieb. Well, now you don't want to foul. It's down too early. It's down too late. I think this is the last possession, Bill. They yeah. can afford to play it all the way down saw, to the end of the clock. I saw John signal. Iverson stripped. Gottlieb knocked to the floor, calls a timeout. Good call. Heads up play, too. If he got up, it would have been a walk. He knew it. One timeout left for Notre Dame. Gottlieb exhausted, pestered all night by Iverson. And who wouldn't, right? Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's, it's not only when he's playing you. He comes from behind with the deflections. He's very alert and attuned to double ups. And right early on, this was a, they were trying to give it up. But down as he turned the corner, all you've got left is the ability to scrape. You know your big guys are going to present yourself. Gottlieb, very alert, just like the son of a coach. Gutsy little guy, huh? Uh, John right now thinking defensively, I'm sure, but as the year progresses, they're going to have to play better offense. They're going to have to be smoother. Clubs lining up with the 2-3 zone, the 1-3-1 three, one unit uh, that Pitt used, and they trap a little more than certainly Notre Dame does. They've been laid back and just still as effective. I think as Notre Dame tries to establish itself in this league, they really need more help from the crowd. They have a full house oh. here tonight, and you never know it, except for maybe on two occasions when they got into it, despite the fact that this gritty team has really battled all night. It's a reaction I get when I walk in after a two-week road trip. Do you think this is the Joan Raftery <laughs> you occasionally get the silence. Out. Well, the silence. Now, Georgetown, you got to score quickly. You get yourself organized in your press. You got one timeout left to play. Can't waste time with the dribble. Over was knocked down. The crowd roared. Garrity, another Look at this. shot that would not bounce in. Hoover still tangled up with Al. And Hoover got up and protested to Jim Byrne. He better be careful because uh, wasn't the kind of language you'd expect from he, young man attending the institution of this ilk. He's right, though. Yes. I'm not going to slap his wrist because he was pinned to the floor and unable to get up. And he's the three-point shooter. They're probably trying to get open for a three down by six. It's an intentional foul is what it was, and it wasn't called. He kept trying to get up, rolled over, tried to get the man off him. Up on the top, now they hit the deck. Now watch this. Now he's being kept there. Now watch at the end. Now he tries to get out. He's got the legs pinned. Amazing. Yeah, you have to call something. Yes, you there, do. Body on body for that long on the floor. I mean, either it's one guy or the other, but call it on somebody. And Manor was trying to help out, and there's the reaction, the sort of the Shakespeare expression. Yes. Did they? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Called out. So with 41.8 left, Ja will shoot two. Gotch has fouled out. And Hickey's going to come in for him. John McLeod using all the time, letting Ja stand there at the line a little bit longer. And Hoover is also taking a seat. Ja, five for eight. Not on the free throw line that much, but I would think Hoover would come in for offense. Crowd booing. John missed the first of two. So it's still a six-point game. You have to shoot a three now, Bill, of you Notre Dame. 42 seconds left. Two trips, uh, yeah, I think so. Don't you? Yeah, I think you got to find a way to get Hoover back into the game. If they get a quick hitter for the deuce and then give the foul, that's fine. But if they waste time... 48, John, you can still see, do some damage with the deuce. I'd get a deuce and foul. Really One more time. I'm really surprised Hoover's on the bench. Foul wasn't on him, it was on Koch. Well, I think maybe John was mad because of his expression or the well, way perhaps. he handled himself. You got to... I'm looking for the three. All right, that's good. Go for the two and a quick timeout. Blocked by John. Time running out. Borowski open. Missed a three. Out of bounds. Off jaw. Notre Dame will play it. And now here comes Hoover. And now you got to go three. I really don't understand. I understand what you're saying. Maybe he was disciplining because of the yeah. reaction. But you're going to discipline him. Make him sit out the rest of the game. You know, discipline for 15 seconds when your team needs a three. Hoover. And he 
was fouled by Harrington. I'll tell you what else could have happened. The referee could have said, John, take him out because of what he said or how he reacted, and then John forgot for a moment. Well, maybe. Get him back in. That's the other right possibility. on the floor. He never left the yep. floor. So it's just a six-team foul. That doesn't hurt Georgetown. It just makes Notre Dame take a few more seconds to get a shot. Next foul, and Notre Dame will be shooting. White just checked in. And they need a shot. They get a flare cut. Just throw it up. They're going to guide you that tightly. Throw it up. Hope you can make a four-point play. And not a good play when you think of it. Oh, fella, stopping the clock. Put him on the foul line. Down to 12.7 seconds left. Up down by seven. Hoover will go to the line for a one-and-one -one opportunity. The one thing you come out of this game if you're Notre Dame is the toughness, yep. the mental stability you need to compete. I mean, Georgetown on the road, extremely aggressive. I thought their defense was as good as I've seen this year, to be honest with you, and had to be, because these guys stepped up pretty good. Hoover making the big threes and the competitiveness on the glass of the Notre Dame guys. 24 points for Hoover, the lead five for Georgetown. They need an immediate foul and get it from Gottlieb on Iverson. With 11.8 left, that's the first foul on Gottlieb. Iverson, a 67% free throw shooter, will shoot two. That guy's been around long enough to know that good efforts don't make you feel better or get you to sleep early. Very upsetting to talk to him about the different games this year. Thought he got it going, he got into the league, got scoring droughts, unable to convert shots. Even tonight, the couple of layup trips with a minute and 30 left, couldn't convert. Iverson. Laughing for himself. Well, I think that's to get the little excitement in the crowd. crowd's getting on him a little bit. He's having some fun with them. Georgetown will survive this scare from Notre Dame. Harris is serving notice. He's going to come in here. It's going to be a tussle. Got leave. Long three. Ryan Hoover, the runner, that goes, and they get their last time out with 2.1 left. So they're going to need divine intervention. Yeah, I think so. Uh, all those prayers uh, don't help much with 2.1 seconds left against the tough Georgetown club. They were solid. 2.1 seconds left. And Notre Dame down by five. The Irish have just used their last time out. They're trying for their first Big East win here tonight, but it won't happen. Came close in the first game at Rutgers, lost in overtime. They have Rutgers here on Saturday, so perhaps a chance then. Hickey collided with the Whites when they had the steal lined up. Iverson holds on to the ball, and this one's over. Great mental toughness, I think, by Georgetown, and didn't back, it, back off at all, Notre Dame, did they? No, oh, indeed. Georgetown with the win now, 15-2, 5-1 in the game, Big East. Baby. For Bill Raftery, Sean McDonough saying so long.